The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest league dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one new husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Summer was a busy time in the Yukon. Not only did the prospectors take advantage of the mild weather and the long hours of daylight, but also the lawless element became more active. One of the men who had no respect or fear of the law was big, tough Jake McGraw. The McGraw gang was fast becoming notorious throughout the Yukon Territory. In Selkirk, they had openly held up a crowded cafe. All right, this is a hold up. First one to make a move is a dead duck. You won't get away with this. The Mounties will get right on your trail. <laughs> I'm used to having Mounties on my trail. All right, get the gold men and hurry it up. All right, we'll get that gold. Don't worry, Jack. We'll clean out the place. Let's get busy, fellas. Come on, let's go. The night before the boat from Selkirk docked at the settlement of Indian Creek, Jack McGraw and his gang held up the express office where large shipments of gold were ready to be put on the boat. All right, let's go. Right, right, right behind you, Jack. What do you want? Uh, shut up, this is a hold-up. The safe is locked. I won't let you take the gold, sir. Uh, I ought to give you a bullet. This will shut you up. Oh! <laughs> Man alive, you sure laid him out that time. Yeah, he'll be out for a while. Now get busy and blow that safe. There ought to be plenty of gold in there. Hurry it up, Frank. We sure will. Let's get busy, boys. All right, come on. Let's get that Get over there. Get over there. Get over there. Come on. Yeah. Well, men, it looks like this territory is just made for us. By the time that clerk at Indian Creek gets in touch with the Mounties, we'll be back at our hideout near Selkirk with our tracks well covered. Huh? You know, Jack, I'm beginning to think there isn't a Mounty in the whole territory that can ever catch up with you. Yeah. <laughs> Getting our yeah. gold your way is sure much easier than breaking our backs digging for it, like the ones we take it from. Do yeah, we? Right. <laughs> Having one of the gang always yeah. hanging around cafes and towns near where we hide out sure is a good idea, Jack. Sure, Jake. That's how Jack gets tipped off to a lot of things. Like when somebody's leaving with their take. Or like when a big shipment is leaving by boat and things like that. Yeah, when I used to be around cafes in the past, I heard the men talk freely and easy about uh, about various things after they had a few drinks, you see. Each one trying to prove to the other that he was doing better than they were. <laughs> yeah, those prospectors yap all the time about how much gold they take from a claim or so. Well, as you said, because of the way they tell everything, I suddenly got the idea it would be a good way to get tipped off so as me and a gang could get our hands on plenty of gold, eh? <laughs> so I decided to forget my measly little claim and let the other prospectors sort of work for me, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Seems like they're working plenty hard for you, Jack. Yeah. Judging from the amount of gold we managed to get so far. <laughs> Someday I'll take my share and go back to the States. Well, by the end of summer, we can all get back to the States if we want to. I promise we'll have plenty of gold to carry along with us, too. You can count on us to stick with you, Jack. You sure know how to lead a gang. And what's better, how to keep out of the way of the monitors. <laughs> It'll take a mighty smart man to outthink you, Jack. Well, thanks. I guess I do have them Mounties gnawing their nails and wondering just where we'll strike next. We'll rest up a bit for a few days, and then if we hear something extra good, we'll get after it. Well, let's hurry it up. I'm getting tired. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. A few days later, the McGraw gang struck again on the trail between Selkirk and Whitehorse when they waylaid two prospectors who were taking their gold out on pack horses. Ned, I can sort of forget all the troubles and suffering we went through. 
Now that we're on our way back to the States with a good take of gold? That's right, Hank. <laughs> yeah, that was the times, though, when I was willing to give up at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Everything we went through was worth it, though. Yep, it was. I guess we... Hey, here comes a group of horsemen up ahead, coming this way. Yeah, I guess they're going up Selkirk Way to try to make a strike. Holy mackerel! They were shooting this way. Over our heads, a sort of warning. Must be bandits. Well, they aren't taking my gold. I'll show them. Uh, don't, Ned. There's about five of them. We can't hold them off. Oh. Ned! Oh. Well, that's what your friend gets for being so free with his gun, mister. You shouldn't have done it. Maybe you killed him. Yeah, maybe we did. You can find out while we take your pack horses. Get them, Frank. Right. Come on, here you go. I got him. All right. Let's get away from here. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, wait. Come back. Our gold. All our gold gone. Poor Ned lying there with a bullet in him. I got to get him back to Selkirk. I got to. Some time later, the man Hank arrived in Selkirk with his badly wounded friend. After getting the wounded man to the doctors, Hank went to the constable's office in Selkirk. I do for you, mister. Me and my partner, we've been robbed. Everything we had is gone. He's lying with a bullet in him over at the doctor's right now. Robbed, you say? When did it happen? Where did you have your gold? We was on the way to Whitehorse with our take. All of a sudden, them bandits come along, several of them. They began shooting. Ned, he shot back. Then they put a bullet in him, made off with our pack horses. Did you get a good look at him? I was so scared I didn't look too close. Just know there was plenty tough-looking. One of them was tougher than the rest. It was bigger than the others. Uh, it must have been McGraw and his gang again. Yep, come to think of it, I reckon it was. I've been hearing about that gang, and how they've been robbing and carrying on around this territory. Frankly, Jack McGraw is the most notorious gang leader in the Yukon. And so far, he's been clever enough to evade capture. Well, what have we got constables for? You Mounties are supposed to keep law and order here in the Yukon. But you let one man like that McGraw run wild, robbing and shooting. Fill us prospectors are bled of everything we work so hard to get. Why don't you do something about that gang? I've tried trailing him, but he manages to cover his trail too well. I don't blame you for being angry about it, but I'm doing all I can. Sure, maybe you are. But what you're doing isn't enough. From my way of thinking, seems to me you'd admit McGraw's got you licked. Get some help here that might be able to track him down. What can one Monty like yourself do against a gang like that anyway? There isn't much more I can do, I admit. Yeah. Where I come from in the States, they used to get bloodhounds after crooks like that. We're good at covering the trail. Of course, there ain't any bloodhounds in the Yukon Territory. But I sure wish there was, I can tell you. Wait a minute. You've given me an idea. As you say, there aren't any bloodhounds in the Yukon. But I know of one of our men who has a dog that can do as well, if not better, than a bloodhound. Well, why don't you get him here? To try and catch that no-good gun tote McGraw. I thunder I will. I'll get off a telegram to Dawson headquarters this afternoon and ask him to send Sergeant Preston and his dog King here to Selkirk. With them on his trail, McGraw and his gang had better look out. Come on, let's go to the telegraph office right now. At the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston, with his great dog, King, entered the inspector's office. Morning, King. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. Came over as soon as I got your message. Oh, good. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Morning, King. King certainly minds well. Yes, Inspector, he does. He's quite a dog. Quite a dog. Oh, Sergeant, I sent for you because I had word from Selkirk about a gang that's been terrorizing the people down there. It's known as the McGraw Gang. The McGraw Gang? That's right. The leader is a big fellow by the name of Jack McGraw. We want him and the gang, Sergeant, for murder. Murder? Yes. A few days ago, they held up a couple of prospectors on the trail south of Selkirk and killed one of them. Has the constable at Selkirk been able to pick up their trail? No, Sergeant. A message I received from Constable Jim Kemper this morning said that he needed help and hoped that you and King could come. I want you to go to Selkirk with King and track down McGraw and his gang. Kemper will, of course, help you. We can't spare any more men right now. King and I will start at once for Selkirk, Inspector. 
With Kemper, we'll do all we can to find the McGraw gang and bring them in. I'm sure you will. But I want to warn you, Sergeant. Jack McGraw is tough and a killer. He'd just as soon kill an officer of the law as he would any prospector on the trail. All the more reason why he has to be stopped, eh, King? Well, good luck, Sergeant. I'm counting on you and King. We'll do our best, sir. Thank you. Come along, fellow. That night, Sergeant Preston and King took the boat from Dawson to Selkirk. When they arrived in Selkirk, Preston, who had taken his horse aboard with him, rode directly to the constable's office. Hold on, hold on. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston. Golly, I'm sure glad to see you and King here. How are you, Jim? Inspector told me you've been having trouble down here. Yes, we have. McGraw and his gang have been more than I could handle. They've got to be stopped, Sergeant. No one feels safe while they're roaming the territory. I can understand that. They're wanted for murder, so King and I will stick with you until we find them. It may not be as easy as we hope. That Jack McGraw seems to be mighty clever and plans his moves well. I see. You think he's found out that you sent for King and me? I wouldn't know. But he has a way of finding out things. That means he must have someone around to tip him off. Did you try to trail him after he killed that prospector? Yes, I did. But you know how many travel that trail during the summer. Mm -hmm. It was impossible to pick up that trail since I didn't get out there until two days after it happened. I can understand that. I don't know just where we can begin. But I knew that if you and King came here, you'd think of something. Well, <laughs> thanks for the confidence, Jim. I hope we can think of something. Let's go to my cabin and get something to eat. All right. Then we can talk over the situation and maybe we can make some plans. Let's go. One King. <laughs> Later, at the constable's cabin, the two Mounties discussed ways and means of bringing the McGraw gang out into the open. Jim, I've thought of something that might work. What's your idea, Sergeant? Do you know of anyone we might get to put on an act at the cafe? Someone to pretend he's been drinking and because of it is talking a little too freely? Yes, I know an old sourdough, Jed Wilson, who'd do it. We can always find him at the trading post. Good. If McGraw does have someone planted in town... Maybe what I tell Jed Wilson to say in the cafe will bring the gang out in the open and put them where they can't make a getaway. Tell me about it. I'll tell you about it as we walk to the trading post to see Wilson. Let's go. Come on, King. <laughs> that evening, after a long discussion with Sergeant Preston, old Jed Wilson entered the cafe and approached the barkeep. <laughs> Hi, Jed. How's everything? Fine, Joe. Never better. <laughs> Give me a little something to take away my hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing will take them away that gave them to you. <laughs> Must have been visiting with some friends, huh, John? Yeah, just been over the hotel with a couple of friends celebrating. <laughs> That's what. Celebrating? What for? You made a strike? Nope. Big secret. Big secret. <laughs> well, tell us about it, Jed. We're all your friends, ain't sure. we? Yeah, oh, come on. I'm not supposed to tell you, understand? Not supposed to. Uh, sure, <laughs> must be something mighty important. Yep, it sure is. Oh, come on, Jed. Let us in on the news. Yeah, yeah, you can trust us, Jed. Well, <laughs> mind you, don't go telling everybody what I tell you. Wouldn't want it to get around, then get blamed if something happened. Ah, uh, ah, oh, go ahead. What is it? Just this. A couple of old friends of mine come into town today. They're leaving on the boat tomorrow for Dawson City. And they're taking the biggest sum of gold anyone ever took out of Selkirk. Yes, sir. Well, you're just stringing us along, Jed. Sure. Nope, nope. I really got two friends leaving on that boat like I said. I even went with them while they arranged for their cabin reservations. If you're not stringing us, Jed, what cabin did they get? 201 it is. Cabin 201. Who are they, Jed? Yeah. Do we know them? Where was their claim located? Come on, yeah. Jed. No, 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 no. I told you it was a secret, didn't I? You won't get me to tell you anything, that's what. And before I give in and decide to talk too much, I'm going to get out of here and go to my cabin right now. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Later that night, at a cabin a few miles from Selkirk, Jack McGraw looked up oh, as one of his men had ended. Jack, I got some news in town that ought to interest you. Well, sit down and tell me what it is. Yeah. Come on. Well, an old sourdough who is slightly tipsy 
come into the cafe and shot off his mouth about a couple of friends of his who are leaving by boat in the morning for Dawson City. What about it? Where do we come in? We ain't what oh, shut up, all of you. Let Frank talk. Go ahead, Frank. Well, seems like the friends he was talking about, they struck it plenty rich. And they're taking their gold with them on the boat. The sourdough claims it's more than anyone's ever taken out of Selkirk at one time. Uh, uh, that sounds interesting, all right. What are the names, Frank? I don't know. But he mentioned the number of the cabin they'll have on the boat. It's number 201. Cabin 201, huh? Funny they'd let the news get around. That's just it. They told the sourdough about it in confidence. But he spilled the news at the cafe when he got to feeling his drinks. What are you going to do, Jack? Do you think it's worth going after? It'd be an easy job, boss. Sure, sure. All right. We'll go after that goal. Now, Frank... You and one of the others go into town and reserve a couple of adjoining cabins for us. Then we'll meet you there in the morning and go aboard. <laughs> By the time those two men in cabin 201 reach Dawson City, they'll be as broke as they were when they came to the Yukon. You can bet on that. <laughs> Late that night, Sergeant Preston with King and the constable went aboard the boat at the dock and entered cabin 201 for which they had arranged earlier. Their horses were stabled below decks and the two Mounties were prepared to await developments. Sergeant, suppose they don't come aboard, what then? If they don't make a move by the time we got to Indian Creek Landing, we'll go ashore and ride back to Selkirk. Well, we have to stay cooped up in this cabin until something happens? No, Jim. We'll fix some pillows under the blankets to make it look as if a couple of men are sleeping there. The captain lent me the strong box I put under the bunk. The adjoining cabin, 202, is empty. That door there connects the two cabins. I'll wait in there with King. I uh, don't expect anything to happen till after the boat's sailed. I hope your plan works. We'll know in another 24 hours. Well, let's go into the other cabin now and get some rest. The captain will see to it that we get food. Come on, King. <laughs> The boat left the dock early that morning. McGraw and his men had two adjoining cabins. And all of them were gathered in the cabin Jack occupied with Frank. Well, men, we're underway. Now, since we all came aboard singly, I don't want you hanging around the deck together, you understand? Me, Jack. Jack. I'll go on deck and get kind of friendly with one of the deckhands. Maybe I can find out something about the two old prospectors who have all that gold. Sure, that's a good idea. Find out all you can, Frank, and then let me know. And tonight, we'll move in on him and get that gold one way or another. Frank spent some time on deck before he met a deckhand that seemed like the type who would be talkative. Frank approached him and spoke. Say, fella, my cigar went out. You got a match? Yeah, yes I am. Yeah. Well, thanks. Wow, yeah, that's got it. Here your matches, and, uh, thanks. That's all right, mister. Hey, uh, maybe you'd like to have a cigar for yourself. Well, now, uh, that's mighty nice of you. I would like to. Well, here you are. Thanks a lot. I'll smoke it later when I'm off watch. Guess you picked up quite a few passengers at Selkirk this trip, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Quite a few is right. A lot of them will get off at Dawson City, but... And again, we'll take on a lot more going to the States. A man I know said a couple of friends of his were aboard. It got on at Selkirk. I think they have uh, cabin 201. A couple of old men, I think he said. Uh, they can't be in 201, then. I happen to know there's a couple of Mounties in that cabin. Look for Dawson City. A couple of Mounties, you say? Yeah. In fact, I saw them get aboard and go into cabin 201. Had a big dog with them. I haven't seen him since. He must be sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, uh, I'll see you again. Sure. Thanks again for the cigar, mister. Gotta get busy cleaning the dish. A few minutes later, Frank was telling Jack and the others what he had heard. Are you sure he said two bodies are in cabin 201? Yep, I'm sure, all right. What do you make of it, Jack? Now, wait a minute, did you say they had a big dog with them? Yeah, that's what the deckhand told me. He saw him come aboard and go into that cabin. What do you, know? what do you think about it, Jack? What about the two old sardos? We. Oui, what about them, huh? Yeah, about oh, quiet down, everybody, and I'll tell you what I think. Well, we're listening. 
Frank, that story you told us about those two old prospectors with a lot of gold was a lie. Hey, hey, now, now, wait, now, hold your horses. Hey. I'm not saying you were lying. But the man that told that story in the cafe lied. I feel sure he was put up to it. Put up to it? But why should he lie? What are you thinking about, Jack? I'm thinking we've been hoodwinked by those two monies, that's what. There's a clever Monty sergeant by the name of Preston. You mean he's one of those who's aboard? Now look, I've heard about Preston and that big dog of his. A dog by the name of King. And I believe Preston and his dog are in that cabin with another Monty. They let that story get around so as to try to trap us, that's what. Say, I'll bet you're right, Jack. That's a dirty trick. We gotta do something then. Yeah, what are we going to do, eh? Now look, don't start worrying. If they want to play a game... We'll play along with them. Sure, but we'll be taking a big risk. We can't have a showdown here on the boat with those Mounties. The captain and the crew will be on their side. Now, uh, calm down, will you? They don't know we're wise to them. That gives us the upper hand. What are you planning to do? They're hot on our trail. And it's going to be all of us, or both of them. And the way I plan it... We've got to get them first. That's right. well, sure. How are you going to do it? I don't hacker to face down any Mounties. Maybe we can get off the board before they know it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. You'll do things my way or we'll all hang. Now think that over. Yeah. Jack's right, fellas. Even if we do get off, those Mounties won't give up. And with that dog along, we won't have much of a chance to cover our trail. Yeah, we yeah. sure will. Now listen, here's what we'll do. Jake... You and the other two have the next cabin. Yeah? Go in there. Then you, Jake, go on deck. Find either the first or second mate. Tell him one of your friends met with an accident. Ask him to come back with you to see about it. Yeah, but then what, Jack? We'll all be in there waiting. When you bring the ship's officer in, we'll jump him, then tie and gag him. Why do that? Whoever you bring back, his uniform ought to fit one of us five. Well, yeah, I guess it would. Then what? We'll leave the mate in there and come back here. Then whoever gets into the uniform will go to the cabin 201. Tell the Monty's that the captain wants them here. That someone's been stabbed to death. That'll bring them on the run. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, seeing yeah. someone in a mate's uniform will convince them it's true. That's the general idea. And when they come in here, we'll be ready for them. We'll finish them off and toss them overboard. What about Preston's dog? I figure they'll leave the dog in their cabin until they decide they need him. Yeah, but what if they don't? Then the dog will get a bullet the moment they bring him into the cabin. Now go ahead, Jake. See if you can find one of the mates. We'll be waiting in the adjoining cabin until you get back with him. A short time later, Jake approached the cabin of the second mate. Just what kind of an accident did your friend have? A hanging lamp in the cabin come loose and fell. It hit him on the head and hurt him kind of bad. Yeah, that doesn't seem possible. Those hanging lamps are very secure. Well, here we are. Come in and see for yourself. He's right inside on the bunk. Go ahead. All right. The second mate stepped across the threshold of the cabin. <gasps> Jack McGraw, who was standing to one side of the doorway, brought the butt of a gun down heavily on the mate's head. All right, that did it. Come on in close the door, Jake. Yeah. We'll get him to one of the bunks. Frank, you look about his size. We'll let you put on his uniform and go to the Monty's cabin. Now, help me move him. All right. In cabin 202, next to the one the old prospectors were supposed to occupy, Sergeant Preston and the constable were still resting. Suddenly, their attention was drawn by a muffled knocking on the door of the cabin adjoining theirs. Quiet, King. Someone's knocking on the door of cabin 201, Jim. Yes. I wonder who it could be. I'll open the door to this cabin, Jack, and take a look. Uh-oh. Who was it? A man in the uniform of the second mate, but I'm sure it isn't he. We talked to the cabin and the mates, and we came aboard. I know. Let me take a look. You're right. Anyway, the second mate knew we'd be in 202. He was in on our plan. Yes. He's leaving. Come on, we'll follow him and see where he goes. Come on, King. The two Mounties and the dog cautiously followed the uniformed figure along the deck to the rear of the boat, then watched as he entered a cabin and closed the door. 
the cabin is a second from the end. Let's go see what we can find out. Easy, fellow. Quiet. This is the cabin. Listen. As Sergeant Preston with Jim and King stood listening intently, the muffled voices of Frank and Jack were heard coming from the closed cabin. I tell you, Jack, I knocked several times and plenty loud, too, but no one answered. But there was money. He's must be in there. They haven't been on deck this morning. Yeah, but if the dog had been inside, seems to me he would have barked or something. There's several of them in there. Yes, I think it's McGraw and his gang. They tried to trick us. Once again, the two Mounties listened as they heard Frank's voice speaking inside the cabin. Well, I'm not worried about that right now. What bothers me is those bodies in that dog not being in cabin 201 like we expected them to be. What's it mean, Jack? Look in the media, suppose. I don't know. But I aim to find out. They must be up to something. They know we're after them. Yes, Jim. We'd better move in on them right now. They're killers, so have your gun ready. Come on. Reach, all of you. You're covered. The Mounties. They found us. They don't let them get away with us. I'll get one of them. No, you don't. As Jack grabbed his gun, he leaped to one side and aimed at Sergeant Preston. But in the excitement, he didn't notice the big gray shadow that had streaked in the door and headed in his direction. The intelligent dog king knew death came from a gun, and he sprang with a deep-throated growl straight at McGraw's head arm. Look out for that dog! But the warning came too late, and the force of King's advance knocked Jack McGraw to the floor. Look, take him away! Shoot the dog, Jack! Shoot him! Get him off! Grab that gun, you! Uh, Easy, King, down for the... We're getting out of here! We're right in the next cabin! Stop him, King! As the remaining two crooks headed for the collecting door between the cabins, King sprang ahead of them and stood growling in the doorway, causing them to hesitate. Up your guns! Here's mine! And mine, too! Now, McGraw, get to your feet! Let go of me, Marty. If you didn't have that gun... I'd Hold my you. gun, Jim. Sure. Now, McGraw, I don't have my gun. All right, then, take this... That's what I was waiting for. Quiet, King. I'll fix you, Preston. I haven't time to wait. What's the matter? What's going on? What's the matter here? We've had a run-in with the McGraw gang, Captain. They tried to lead us into a trap after finding out we were aboard. Well, my second mate, over on that bunk, he, he seems to be wounded. That's not your second mate, as you'll see if you look again, Captain. Your mate is tied up in the adjoining cabin. They hoped to use his uniform to get us to come here where they could waylay us. Huh. Yeah, now I see that he isn't the second mate. Hey, that's the man who gave me a cigar and asked a lot of questions. Oh, did you mention that we were in cabin 201? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I did. He, he seemed nice enough and all. So that's how they found out. Well, Captain, you can help us tie these men up, and we'll take them to headquarters in Dawson. You know, Captain, that's... Uh, Rather unusual for a bunch of crooks to pay their own way for the trip. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> Don't let that duck start anything again. <laughs> <laughs> Just a growl from King is enough to scare the notorious Jack McGraw. Ah, oh, that dog sure settles things fast when he goes into action. And so do you, Sergeant. King and I like action, Jim, but we're both glad this case is closed. Hey, King? <laughs> Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure. The case of the kind-hearted killer. When Buck Crowley picked me up out of the snow, half dead with pneumonia, and nursed me back to health, neither of us knew that I would soon be given the job of tracking him down on a charge of murder. I considered it the most unpleasant assignment I'd ever been given, and it very nearly turned out to be my last. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure... Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck till next Wednesday. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.